You're listening to Life Check Yourself with life coach, transformational leader, and dating and relationship badass, Marnie Batista. Every week, you'll get the raw truth from top experts and real people on the important life and love issues you want to know about. So if you're ready to life check yourself in your relationships, your career, and the areas of your life that matter most to you, and you're not afraid to be called out on your uh, stuff, then you're ready for what's next. Life Check Yourself with Chris Gillis. Do not do this. Top two attraction killers explained. Ladies, are you ready to <laughs> life check yourself? Uh, we got Chris Gillis here. <laughs> it's my favorite time of the week when I get to dish all things dating and relationships with the one and only Chris Gillis who I just realized is going to be back on the man panel for Ignite Night Your Life. If you have not, I don't know when you're listening to this, but if you're listening to this before January 2022, get your ticket now for Ignite Your Life three-day uh, virtual retreat starring Chris Gillis on our yes. man panel. Uh, man, what's, a, what's a man panel, Marnie? A man panel is where you come to the evening session with questions you Always wanted to ask men who would tell you the truth. So we've got Chris and a variety of other quality dudes of all different ages and relationship status uh, giving the truth, telling the truth. I always say, like, how would you what would you tell your sister? Like, you know, you tell her the truth. And that's what it is. And the women love it. It's a safe place for us to not yeah and and it's you, marty's really good about creating that environment which i appreciate uh to to keep it real and that's our only obligation is to tell the truth and even when they when we sometimes we don't want to hear it but but also i like that you bring a really cool variety of guys on and sometimes yeah we disagree and then you guys can take with it uh whatever works for you yeah no it's so cool so it's iylvip.com iylvip.com and if you're listening to this after that just Hit IYLVIP.com anyway, and you get on the wait list for the next time we do it. Um, all right. We are talking. Oh, my God. Uh, we're talking about Clayton, who's not Colton. Uh, Clayton is a big dude. He He's yeah. like Popeye. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, that, the whole like time I was like. Him, everything's clothes are like, he's just fucking massive. He's, he's like massive. Six, five, 260. Yeah. He's a mountain of a man. He is. And the girls are so tiny. Um, so here's what I wanted to talk about from this show. I was cringe. Uh, there was a, a young woman named Cassidy who is so aggressive. Mm. Uh, she's like, just wants to make out with them all the time. Like, basically, she's like, hi, let's talk um, and let's make out. So first of all, I, I am cringing over her assertiveness i think it's aggressive not assertive also i'm a little i don't know i think she's just going hard for the sex like sexual connection like you want me rather than you know who she is mm -hmm. and i also think she's super like her vault like i want to talk about all these points and like her vulnerability feels like um super fake mm -hmm. uh because she's like i like you i really you know i like you like that's what all she says she's like i like you and then she like jumps on his lap um so what do you think about cassidy and how what's interesting assertive and aggressive Ooh, i love that yeah uh because you're always like you know that's a scary thing about relationships it's easy to sit back and um you know and wait for the guy to do all the work and you know make the moves and be courageous and you're like oh buddy something don't you have something about something doing it courageously or maybe it's Brene Brown daring courageously yeah. or whatever and yeah and she's got balls but almost like too big of balls and you're like eh. and she's got she turns a dude where she's just trying to get laid and you're right, like wait what's going on here um which it, you're right it was a turn it was a turn off I get it so um I get. I'm sure. I'm sure out there when you're trying to date a, a high uh, value man who's got a ton of uh, a ton of, of, of potential suitors and ladies he's dating. I can imagine that those those competitive juices flow. But definitely, there is a a line that I felt that she crossed it. It's not attractive. That is becomes almost 
instead of strong, it becomes almost needy or weak and, and definitely inauthentic. We'll see if um, if he figures out. I think a quality man would would uh, yeah would would figure that out. That she's like we've said before, she doesn't seem like she's there um, to win him. She's ready there to win whatever you know place whatever avatar is in you know the, the placement of being the bachelor. So I didn't like it. Um, I hundred percent agree with you. She doesn't ask the the awesome, the quality questions, the the wise, just the, I like, I like not. There's no because after anything, which is so it's very shallow. Which, by the way, I think for those of you who do watch the Bachelor franchise shows, I think I'm calling Clayton has a little Matt James syndrome, which is yeah. another cast member of the past because he literally like this bugs so much. And I think yeah. again, is this. Like, I want people to just listen and watch because it's not, to me, it's not vulnerability. Like, one of the, and this wasn't Cassidy, this was another girl, maybe Serena or maybe another one of them, and she's, like, talking about something really personal. I can't remember which one it was, but she was talking about a story about maybe her her parents and her dad was ill and he was in the ICU, and, like, she's saying, like, you know, her parents have been married a long time and family is really important to her and how you show up for each other, and her mom was in the, you know, really like with her dad and that's what I want. And instead of like sharing or acknowledging or validating like, wow, that must have been so hard for you. It sounds like your mom's an amazing person. Like what, you know, Mm. what are the, he was like, what I really like about you is that you seem like you are a, you know, blah person and you are really smart and you, he's like basically analyzing them out loud. You have a mm, lot of mm, the qualities mm, that I'm really looking for. And mm, like, it's a fucking job interview. Mm, mm. Interesting. Instead of actually taking the, uh, the information sharing and and letting it land somewhere. Uh, he didn't share anything, Chris. Like he yeah, didn't say right. like, Oh yeah. Like my mom was around yeah. my dad. When, and so I really want this. I want to like really point this out because I think like when I talk to people, they're like, I'm totally vulnerable on a date or I'm, Sure. You know, I am, I, I'm super open, you know, and I really want you all to understand that you might think you're being open because words are coming out of your mouth, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, um, that was so in the head. I didn't get any heart from mm-hmm. Clayton in any of those connections with any mm-hmm. of the women so far, in mm-hmm. my opinion, maybe no, a I, little bit with Serena. Yeah, I agree. And maybe, um, yeah, and, and I think it's you point out something that's important to, to recognize. Yeah, vulnerability isn't just on um, just on the, the person holding the microphone; it's also on the listener as well. And yes, probably why I was off putting to, to Clayton because he's yeah, he's not letting. Instead, he's just like, sitting back, like he's you know the big swinging dick holding the the the, 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 the interview um, behind the desk, making the decision with the pen and paper, checking off versus yeah, exactly listening with an open heart and, and seeing where, yeah, where that lands and if it resonates with them. And yeah, if it serves up any, there weren't any feelings inside him, right? He just had that big old underbite smile of his just kind of <laughs> grinning away and checking stuff off. Ladies, you should literally hit the little rewind for 30 seconds and listen to the, the wisdom of Mr. Gillis again on what he <laughs> just said, because that is, that is just such a huge, huge point. Like, if you show up on a date energetically, like you are sitting there behind the desk being like, does this person check my fucking boxes? Uh, and then whether you say it out loud or you're thinking it like, oh, I really like this person. He seems like he has a very good relationship with his family. Oh, I really mm-hmm. like that he has a good job. He seems very, you know, and then what Clayton's doing is he's basically saying mm-hmm. that. I really like that you're independent. I really like that you seem mm-hmm. to, mm-hmm. <laughs> you're like, okay. So to me, like, there's a lot of focus here on physical connection and chemistry. Mm. Um, and I haven't really seen any, like, heartfelt <laughs> connections. But I have seen some of the women trying to do that, I think, on a couple of the dates. At least the young woman who was saying about her dad. I can't remember her name. Uh, like- uh, I, I don't remember. It, it is. It is. Gosh, I'm just thinking about how it is. Women are geniuses. You women are so good at, um, and we see this every season. They quickly suss out what gets the, uh, I guess what, uh, what, 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 at what level are are the bachelors, the Matt Jameses versus the pilot Pete's versus whatever. Like what, what, what is, uh, how are the, the men, uh, what frequency are they picking it up on? And oftentimes it's just that can just just climb in. It comes a, a, 
uh, contest to climb in their lap on time, in his lap as fast as possible and jump hug and all these things. And so, uh, so it takes so long. Um, yeah. And the guy's too busy holding girls, making out with them. His mouth's too busy, you know, when somebody else's mouth to actually connect and, and speak with somebody else. And he's God, it's, it's really Darwin esque. And I, I, I just got to applaud those gals who, uh, I know. Who, who know how to get these guys attention and, um, and I'm the producer are great. And I think eventually he will have to, um, yeah, get, go deep and open up and, and not just have to uh, maybe just let's give him the benefit of the doubt. It's box checking. He's got what feels like a hundred women there. And he's like, okay, I got to quickly suss some of these out. Cause I want to have sex with them all. Ah, what, exactly. am I gonna do? what am I going to do? Mm. I think. And, and the other thing that I think is really interesting too, is, um, I want to talk about, um, Elizabeth. Is that mm-hmm. her name? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, I think, you know, there was a really interesting thing came up. And I and she in this particular example, it's between two women, actually. And one woman is like, wow, you know, we this could happen in real life so easily. We were out like at lunch the other day and I said something to you. And then like you just ignored <laughs> me. And like we're talking to Sally instead. And I feel yeah. like I thought we were friends. You know, right. And um, what happens is she's like, well, I have ADHD. And so I can't process incoming information at the same time. Uh-huh. And uh, which I thought, I thought that was a super fair thing. And then what happens from there is dramatic and all of this kind of stuff. But I'm really interested. You said maybe she was saying that as a way to distract, like more of not from a vulnerable, authentic place, but more yeah. like, is she, and the reason why I want to bring this up is because I think for, a lot of people who are dating, mm-hmm. they, they, and where this goes back to the vulnerability thing mm-hmm, is mm-hmm. like, I'm, I want to say something that is vulnerable. So I'm mm-hmm. going to share. And I call, I call this one the medical overshare. Mm. Right? Mm. Like, is it really like, is that really vulnerability? Is there, in, is it in context? Mm. Um, are you just saying that, you know, what's your, What's your awareness around sharing that kind of information? Wow. Uh, right? Yeah. What do yeah. you think about what do you think about that? Because I have a, a couple of examples in with my clients that I, I want to share with you. But like, what do you think about that? And I'm wondering if your former girlfriend before this, she seems like she would be a person who would do yeah. that. Or have you ever been on a date where someone did the medical overshare and you're like, well, why? Yeah, God, and that that's that's a wow, that's a great takeaway. Um, so I said, okay, I saw some, that's fantastic. <laughs> With wow, good job, Marty. I uh, <laughs> uh, you're right, and that that is that is a hundred percent a real life dating thing, and it is, um, gals, yeah, uh, guys, we 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 we've done it too. Um, yeah, that it, that, that I love it. It's like, a, like it's not a, it's an inauthentic fake vulnerable i'm gonna be vulnerable but you're not it's it's rehearsed it's done a million times i think what's this is how it is this, this is why my bullshit meter went off and this is what we always talk about with vulnerability you know we say vulnerability is, is is you know is you know daring bravely into that unknown space um and not knowing without an ex, an expectation and a need for it to turn out to get to, to get a specific result yeah the reason i the reason i called bullshit and dr emily and i kind of got into it and i didn't put my finger on it now until you brought it up was because I felt like, which I, I told you, I felt like she said that and it was in, and she, she said with the sole intention and purpose and was actually surprised when it didn't shut down the situation. And I think a lot of times, yes, a medical um, vulnerability, fake vulnerability uh, is, is, is brought there to be like, oh, well, I can't do this because I have whatever. I, I don't know, celiac disease. Oh, like as in it, as a, like, um, as a disclaimer, an excuse for certain behaviors. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, I can't go mm. here or yeah, I don't want to do oh, something. Oh, this is so, okay. This is so deep because <laughs> because I this is something that Jeremy will say to me all the time. Like <laughs> you know, like you know that I can't, I can't, I don't remember things, or you know yeah. that I don't, you know. <laughs> Blah, 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 blah. Right. Like, yeah. And so I'm taking it now from the medical just to the like, oh, well, you know, I'm this way. So therefore, I don't have to try and change it or there, therefore, I don't have to, you know, blah, 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 blah. Um, so I think that there it's like there's like variations of that. Right. And when you are and the thing that I think is super interesting 
where was I? I was researching. I was interviewing. Oh, I did a I did a show yesterday with a great guest. You guys want to check this one out with uh, Tracy Crossley. But she was talking about how we need to take responsibility, mm-hmm. and that's what creates connection, mm-hmm. right? And so, um, in that instance, Elizabeth is sort of like saying, "Well, I have ADHD," and your bullshit meter went up because you thought she would just be like, "Oh, I'm really sorry. I understand that. Okay, yeah. let's be friends." Um, I don't... She's supposed to do that, and then and then and then Elizabeth had this like, "How dare you keep talking after I said my Trump card?" In a conversation's over. I said. Maybe you didn't hear me. I said, I have ADHD. How could she have done? Okay. So if she was going to take responsibility. Yeah. Okay. So she's saying, I felt like you ignored me or I felt unimportant or whatever. You know, I felt like we, I thought we were better friends than the way mm-hmm. you treated me. Again, this happens in real life all the time. Fuck yeah. um, and let's say she does have ADHD or any other atypical neuro disorder um, or whatever it is, which a lot of us do. What could she have said that would have been like taking responsibility and vulnerable versus like an explanation? Sure. I think take a, first of all, take a beat um, because she was clearly annoyed by Shanene and she was like, God, I wish this girl would just go away. But to take a beat, I think if you're going to share something vulnerable, um, it's important to take a deep breath and then make sure it's shared from a, um, from, from a, 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 from a calm place. That you can become, that you can be vulnerable in, not just a uh, shut the fuck up sticker that you're slapping on someone, <laughs> uh, which which uh, which is what she did. So um, I think yeah, she didn't miss. She was she was really was just wanted to end the conversation. And I think yeah, if she would have, okay, hey, okay, and, like I hear you. Got 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 to a neutral place, and I don't know if is is it ever possible to share vulnerability if it's in like an excited, annoyed, probably difficult. Um, yeah, to, to do that. But she was, there was too much energy um, in that conversation and too much confusion and victimy stuff and uh, from, from, from Shanae's uh, aspect. So I think that's what, I think that's what led it to kind of the disaster that it all turned into. Yeah, it turned into a giant thing. I mean, I think if she could have said like, um, wow, I'm really sorry. I made yeah. you feel that way. That's it. Yep. Um, shit. I didn't realize that happened. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm so sorry I hurt your feelings and made you feel un- unimportant and that we weren't good friends. Um, sometimes, mm-hmm. because I have an auditory processing challenge, I don't hear things in my periphery. Yeah. And, uh-huh. um, but, and I do that sometimes. And, oh, my gosh, I'm so sorry. Or, 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 yeah, or what's, or. I don't think she wants to say sorry or just like, yeah, just let you know. Yeah, it wasn't. This happens, you know, a lot. You know, it's not, you know, again, it's not just you. And to, to let her know, sorry, you know, or yeah, it's it wasn't intentional, I suppose, can be. If you, if you can't get yeah. the place, you and you sorry. Think, I think the other thing interesting, too, is like we always talk about like the repair conversation. It's like um, trying to, to end it with like, um, so next time what I'd like from you is mm-hmm. and next time what I can do is. Mm-hmm. And so she could have even. And, and so. Mm. interesting for Elizabeth if this really is a challenge which I could assume it's a huge one I'm wondering if she has set up for herself um, uh, guards right like or little processes or procedures right so if someone's trying to talk to me or says something and I'm not responding like you know that happens so what I need for you to do is just like put put your hand on my arm like and let me know you're there or whatever it is and um and then next time, what I'd like for from you is to just tell me right after or whatever it is, right? Or come up with an, a solution so that it doesn't happen again. Yeah. And yeah. that's kind of like a grown-ass way to like take responsibility rather yep. than just saying, well, I have this. So that's, that's, that's why. Okay, let's move on. And I, so, uh, and I don't like Shanae's character very much. Um, yeah. And her name's Shanae, but I. I don't know. I just started calling her Shanene she, before. She, 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 she did. By the yeah. by the end of the episode, she was calling herself Shanene. But um, I don't like her character very much. But I, um, I, and I think she was being manipulative to start yeah. with. I don't really know if she really did feel unimportant or disrespected. Yeah. Who the hell knows? But uh, but I think in the end, it's a great example of how friends, colleagues, re- romantic relationships we have misunderstandings and yeah. a good way to like try and and 
and repair it. Um, uh, what, what, what was the name of the, the gal you interviewed? Tracy Crossley. Uh, Tracy Crossley? Yeah. She said something uh, in there. I think that the powerful takeaway is that, and this is so true, is that um, taking uh, ownership and responsibility, is it's just sexy. It's strong. It's powerful. Yep. And when I went on Reddit and I went down because I, you know, I felt – off. I told you, Dr. Emily and I were, we kind of got into a little tip at the end of the night about how I perceived uh, that, that interaction, and what she did. And I woke up and I, I went on a Reddit thread. And what was consistent, what I found off putting, gross, is that um, from all these, you know, uh, women who are bachelor, bachelor, uh, bachelor fans who do have ADHD, very, they were saying all everything valid. But what I noticed is that it was all um, same thing that it was from both sides, same thing that was gross about Shanae. It was all very victim -y. It was all about themselves and about how they're misunderstood and poor me and life is so hard. And, and there was nobody did what you just said there. There was nobody stepping in and saying or even trying to help out or not, not, well, not a single one of these people who were, who were so upset and off, off put by, um, by, by this, uh, you know, the, 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 this mental uh, you know, different ability to, to process information. And instead it was all about how I'm, 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 I'm the one who's hurt. Everybody's hurting me and I'm misunderstood versus, well, well I can help, help people understand. And that's, no, and that that's so true, Chris. I mean, if you look at like one of our favorite shows, love on the spectrum, yes, they have yes. a lot of just uh, atypical neuro behaviors and they're all like, these are how I am. So let me figure out how to do a workaround for yep. it so I can still make a connection. Right. Yeah. It's a superpower. And it. so, um, yeah, that's so true. So, so, so I think that is great. And then the, just to circle back to the medical overshare, um, I think like in my, if you guys go back and listen to my example, it's not like, oh, I have ADHD. It's like, oh yeah, I have a process. Sometimes I'm processing, right? That's like a first date situation. Like maybe on the third or fourth date, you'd be like, yeah, I have ADHD. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so it's like, I had a, I had a, when I was way back when I was coaching men, I had a, a dude uh, who went on a date, really gorgeous woman he was super excited about it and they were at, at the dinner and he offered her some like gourmet macaroni and cheese that he had mm -hmm. ordered like hey do you want to try this it's amazing and she went into this whole thing about how like she has congenital heart disease and like she doesn't <laughs> like to eat dairy and she was this like sexy ass like yeah. Yeah. gorgeous woman like if you think of an la woman like mm -hmm. that was her right mm -hmm. and he just was like not like ooh, that's bad but he was like oh i want to have kids someday Mm. And so oh. it was like, I don't really want, do I really want to be in a relationship with someone who has heart, like a congenital thing? Like, am I going to pass that on? He literally didn't go out with her again. Fair yeah. enough. Because he was like, like that, I don't know enough about it and I don't want to research it, but the whole thing just put him off, you know? Yeah. And so again, like be discerning about what you share and when you share it. Yeah. Um, you don't need to throw everything out there on the first date. Yeah. Yeah. And if you do, uh, and if it does need to be shared, what's so important is, is to your, to your, your, the person you're on a date with is he's perceiving how you feel about it. If it's, if it's, you know, like we're talking about love on the spectrum, if it's something that you're like, Oh, this is, it, it, it changes things. But because of that, it's given me X, Y, Z superpower benefit, life perspective, whatever it is, that's hot. That's sexy. That's awesome. That's going to make our life more uh, it's going to make our life even better. But if it's something like, oh, my gosh, this is a crutch. It's going to hurt me. They're like, uh oh, stay away. Danger. Will, Will Robinson. <laughs> Danger. I like that. Danger. OK, let's talk about um, Shanae Um yeah. and You said she is begging to be noticed. Um, yeah. yeah. Oh. She's that person who's like she reminds me of like, have you ever been out and there's a guy and he's talking to a woman and there's a difference between being like assertive and trying to break into the circle. And then there's that <laughs> woman who's like, hey, everybody, you know, and you're like, uh, we're in a conversation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Shanae. And then you go back to the conversation. Right. Like there's like it's like she has uh, she's not picking up the social cues. Right. Yeah. Um, and she's also being aggro in my opinion, versus like just assertive and, and sweet or yeah, it's just kind of freaking me out. Her and yeah. Cassidy are like, yeah, no, I've, I've, and it's funny. Yeah, I hundred percent. I'm thinking of a, a few friends that I have who are just again, like you said, these gorgeous prototypical, uh, 
uh, uh, Los Angeles women who have everything going for them. And they are so incredibly cringy because if people don't look at them or talk to them for a few minutes, um, yeah, their narcissism is so high. Everything needs to be about them. And it's just a total turnoff. And these poor girls can't land a date um, or at least a second date, uh, you know, to, to, to help them out. They can't get out of their own way. They can't. They're not. They're so uncomfortable being, you know, just in their own skin. And it's a lot of work to be with somebody. <laughs> like that, <anyways. laughs> yeah. If that's you, call me. Uh, okay, so let's talk about this. Um, the the friends with benefits. Yes, sitch. finally. I was afraid we weren't going to get no, there. No, we're getting there. Oh. So um, in this episode, I think it is Cassidy who basically says off. It's on camera, yeah. but it's. It's sort of like one of those like um, ring, <laughs> looks like a ring video, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. It was not the one that made the final cut, but then they're like, ooh, this is so good. We have to put it in. Um, so it's not shot well, but it's basically her saying, you know, like, uh, yeah, I have this guy I hook up with off and on at home. And like, you know, I couldn't tell him where I was, but he's like, ooh, let's watch together and bang, right? Like, he's just, yeah. He's like, cool, hit me up when you're back. Well, fuck. Um, yeah. Uh, and he tries to make it nice by saying, we'll watch the show together, which is funny. Anyway, so, <laughs> and I am just, like, can the question is, and I think this is a pretty good topic. Can you bang your friends with benefits and also date with dignity? Like, actually look for a long-term relationship? So, you know, I like it, but I, I don't know. Maybe you will. Um, but guys oftentimes, most of the time can have, yeah, have F buddies. Um, and it will, it's cause men were not good at, we're not good at a lot. We, we, we don't, we don't have, we don't have, we don't have the dignity <laughs> that oftentimes the, the internal that you do. And, uh, if we're, if we're not, you know, hooking up oftentimes, uh, yeah, we're out of practice and cycle and, uh, yeah, uh, things don't go great. So, I don't know many. I don't know many men who will who do uh, when they're in off season, not in a relationship. <laughs> off season, who, who, that's who, so who, funny. Who don't just have some, you know, some piece of ass on the side. That why can't that, they just have a wank? Uh, as my oh husband God, would say, a wank. Yeah, no, that's a poor man. Come on, we can all of that. That's no a, date with Rosie Palm. Come no, on. No, you don't want to look at you. That's humiliating after you're done. You're like the shame that, that that runs over you, and you know you could be and should be with the warmth of another woman. It's just uh, that's such a option oh, Z. It's a, it's it's, a, it's, a, it's the worst thing. No, it's tough. No, absolutely no. It, it, it's because the wanks the wanks the easy way out. Um, and maybe it's just like warming up a little bit. A wanks like playing a video game on baseball. Versus getting in a, in a in a fuck buddy, at least you're in a batting cage, swinging a real bat. It's not a real yeah, game. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess it's true. Like, if it's a regular person that you hook up with, I don't know. I mean, I think this would be, if I, when I was dating, I would think this would be a don't ask, don't tell. Right? Like, I don't sure. want to know this is going on, um, which is why you should all get STD tests before you <laughs> consummate your relationships, mm. um, in my opinion. But... Um, I think for women, mm -hmm. it's a little harder because what yeah. I learned in my own experience was I thought I could, when I was single, I thought I could do it right. Mm -hmm. Like I had, I separated dudes, right. Into like dating, like plus like actual relationship material. And then just, you know, mm -hmm. my friend's benefit guy or whatever it is. Um, notice I didn't say guys, um, <laughs> but, um, and I had myself sort of convinced for me that I could keep them separate. But what I realized was that I was practicing being guarded with the, <laughs> with the FWB guy <laughs> because I, I just was like emotionally disconnected and just having fun. And that was fun and it was fine. But then there just came this point for me where I realized it was still impacting my ability to really be open yeah. because I kind of had like a safety in the background, yeah. which gave me the feeling of like enough. Yeah. So when I coach women now, I I try to discourage them uh, from having that on the side 
because mm. of that compartmentalization. No judgment. I think it re just requires rigorous honesty. And for me, I noticed that in my journey, it was not working. I don't think it works for God. I mean, all all friends with benefits, relationships, they, they come to an end at some point. And usually, um, yeah, usually, usually it is the it's usually the the female partner who says, I can't do this anymore. And you know what? And that makes complete sense. No wonder guys like it so much because um, we are able to compartmentalize that and we get a lot of the benefits because you guys leak out that beautiful feminine um, girlfriend energy on accident. You know, no matter how tough and badass and think you're, you know, think you're being a little porn star and it, you guys can't help but be nice and kind and give us a sample and a taste of having some of those girlfriend benefits as well so it works great for, for for guys or else if it wouldn't then there'd be a lot of women who are like you know uh, but it's it's very seldom the guy who, who cuts it off so the girl's like okay i can't do this anymore so yeah it, it is that's it is, true though it's usually it the women that end it huh like an a, it really is it all it, it always is and i can think that that's more evidence um you know time tested that women should listen your your gal should listen to your advice and this is something it's it's not going to end the way that you think it's going to end. You know, oh, it's just fun. And that's how every girl I started out, you know, have, I've, when I've had them, they always like, you know, promise. And I make them promise and picky swear it's not going to get weird and <laughs> things aren't going to get dramatic and emotions aren't going to get involved. And it's just this. And yeah, 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 totally, totally, totally. And sure enough, never, ever, ever, 100% of the times that ever uh, not end badly. I was, um, I tried so hard to watch Yellowstone because I wanted to yeah. be cool and be in same, the conversation. Same. But oh. there's just way too much murder for me. Uh -huh. um, but the uh, and I'm only watched season one, so any of you watched this. But the Beth, the character of Beth, the, the sister. Did you watch it? Yeah, I, I tried the same as you. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, she is let's just say guarded. Um, and there's a scene where she's fucking this guy Riff or Rip or whatever yeah, his name yeah, is. Rip. I don't know if you saw it. And like yeah. he pushes her up his wall and he fucks her. And then yeah. he's like, do you want to go to a music festival? And she goes, now you've, you always ruin it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm right, like, right. And because, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what did he do wrong? He did everything, you know, it's like, fuck it. You want to be, if he, he would have been damned, if he would have just walked away, he would have ruined it. If he would be nice to her and ask for somebody who would ruin it. Yeah. Whatever. Well, then they have a conversation later, which is mm -hmm. so insane. And he, she, she she goes out on so he said why why did I ruin it and she says because you asked me to a fucking festival and he's like well how about if I say let's go get a bottle of whiskey and watch like fucking yeah. wolves like eat yeah. the remains of a buffalo or some shit uh -huh. like that and she's like that's my kind of date <laughs> you know and they get in the truck and then they go and they watch the wolves gathering around the dead buffalo and then she takes a swig of whiskey and then she runs out of the car she's like Bleh! like trying to scare away the wolf and he's like you are a fucking crazy bitch um Whoa. so she's got issues although my friends who watch all the time are like oh no beth she evolves over the four seasons she's amazing yeah. so i couldn't stay with it but anyway i think that's sort of like what happens like is and usually Typically, it's the guy who's like, oh, God, you ruined it. Like, you know, we were just fucking and it was cool. And now you're like, hey, do you want to go hang out with me and my friends? Um, so I think it's not a good thing. I believe in the context of this uh, TV program, we're talking about The Bachelor. Um, she just want. I mean, everything points to Cassidy being the foil, being the villain, being the one who like is there for the wrong reasons. I think he said, you know, like, can I take back a rose? Um, so, you know, I just think she's there for the wrong reasons, period. Sure. Sure. So I, I don't really have any other things to say about freaking Cassidy. I, I, I think with I think with 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 fuck buddies, um, it's absolutely, you know, vital that we're clear on on why we're doing what we're doing why we're hooking up with this person who doesn't want to be in a relationship with us and, and how we feel about it and that just takes such incredible honesty and um cassidy is kind of yeah gross because you can see she's just so thirsty for constant attention and that's her vagina is the same exact way apparently just so incredibly needs it and cannot be alone by herself and okay whereas there's some other gals we haven't seen any screen time because they're they're sitting back and they have that i mean and not just nothing being classy is, uh, is 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 above all everything but there's they're they're a little more demure and they just seem more calm and, and emotionally mentally 
collected than her. And like you said, not that train wreck of a TV. So they're not getting all that airtime. But I think with, 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 with fuck buddies in particular for the, the gals who are out there doing it, it's a good idea. Yeah. Just to get real clear and say, Hey, you know, and also it's not a one-time check-in like, Hey, okay, well maybe I'm just, maybe you're just tired of using your vibrator. Like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just, I, right. this is a real, real guy. He's hot. I'm just going to use him. But then to continually to, to check in with yourself and which, um, yeah, and say, uh Oh, uh Oh, something's I'm, I'm starting to have feelings for him, you know, and that's, you, you know, what happens. Um, ironically, Marnie guys wouldn't, we, we, we would, uh, if, if, if girls treated us as nasty and cold as we treat them when we have fuck buddies, we wouldn't want them either because the truth is, yeah, we, we just do it cause we win every time. It's so stupid. Uh, as we get to walk away and say, aha, you see, she, she left and you know, did all that. But if a girl was truly as, uh, uh emotionally removed and that would feel very cold and that's not really what, you know, we may say that's what we, what we do want, but it's, it's not, um, we do want that. That, that flavor of that relationship as well. But I think, yeah, long story short. Don't do people, it. Yeah, don't do it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And if don't you don't do it, if you have to do it, talk to Marnie or your girlfriend and check in yourself every single time you have your feelings and then be honest with yourself. And I think oftentimes you'll realize there's a little Cassidy emptiness hole that needs to be filled in more ways than one. Yeah. And then it leaks into everything you do, right? Because then she's leading with sex, uh, with, with with uh, Clayton, so there's some sort of thing going on there where like my value is comes from sex. Yeah. Um. So we want to watch that. Uh, <laughs> Christopher, always a good, always a good chat a good with chat. you. Um. I am looking. I'm really sad that there is a little reprieve next Monday. I don't know why, but yeah. uh, our television program will not be uh, on the television. Uh, so we will be taking a week off, ladies. I know you're going to be really sad, but that's why you should just come to Ignite Your Life, IYLVIP.com. Come see Chris Gillis and his super hotness that goes with that sexy voice. <laughs> uh, and whatever you do, even if you're horny, life check yourself. We'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye. Hey, thanks for tuning into today's show. So if being in an intimate relationship in which you feel 100% seen, heard and accepted by a high caliber man is a priority for you right now and you're interested in seeing if you're a fit for working with me and my team at Dating with Dignity, here's what I want you to do. Just head over to DWDVIP, that's D as in dating, W, D as in dating, VIP.com and book a call to speak with my team. We'll get on the phone with you for about 60 minutes and you'll get crystal clear on what's stopping you from finding true love right now. We'll also take a look at what you want to create, what you want your whole life to look like when you're able to finally be fully expressed as a woman in a healthy relationship with an incredible guy. And if we can help you get from where you are right now to where you want to be, we will show you the fastest path possible that makes sense for you to do that. We help smart, successful women all over the world solve this one missing piece in their life so they can finally have it all. So to see if we can help you do the same thing, head over to DWDVIP.com. I'm Marnie Batista, and let's talk soon.